My students in this project have the chance to do real science. They can interact with real physical phenomena that's happening as recent events. It doesn't matter how exciting the topic is, if it's in a textbook, a lot of students think it's dead and boring. And if the same thing, the same exercise is happening with something that they just heard about on the news, suddenly it's real, it's live, it's important. That's what's happening with these slinky seismometers. What students are doing is an opportunity instead of an assignment. Our main contact has been someone from uh, Eagle, Idaho, named Ted Channel. He was the one who designed the seismometer. So Boise State University had a document online with instructions on step-by-step -step how to build a seismometer out of a slinky. So we compiled a list of our parts and then we ordered them online and when they came we were able to follow online instructions and assemble it by cutting pieces and screwing them together and coiling wire. Our device is a clear acrylic tube and inside of it uh, attached to the top cap is a slinky, like off the shelf, and at the end of it we have a eye bolt with ring magnets on it, and these will go up and down when there's an earthquake through a PVC pipe with copper coil that is suspended in the acrylic tube. As the magnet passes up and down through the coil of copper wire, it will generate electrical impulses which are then sent to our Arduino box which magnifies them and turns it into something the computer can read. One of the biggest challenges when we were building the seismometer was coiling the wire. And we tried multiple methods to coil this wire around this PVC tube, and we found that it kept breaking because we were using magnet wire, which is really thin. Uh, the method we eventually chose, we put our PVC on a drill using a screwdriver, and we spun that around and let the wire uncoil from the spool and guided it to coil in the right place. We believe that we used way too much copper magnet wire on the seismometer and that enables us to basically detect the magnetic field extremely far away, which may not be a good thing at all because if there's any other magnetic field present when ours is working, it could disturb our results. Also for first time builders, make sure if you're doing it with a team that you have somebody that knows electronics because we struggled to figure out how to code it as well as how to use our proto board and make the amplifier. Information that comes from a seismometer just tells you an earthquake occurred and we don't know where. Let's say that this is our seismometer and we get an earthquake, our seismogram tells us that earthquake occurred somewhere a certain distance away. We don't know what direction, it could have been any, we don't know where it was. And so the, the question still remains, where is the earthquake? Let's say we have a station here that detects the same earthquake. Well, we get some information and we find out that here's the distance to that earthquake. Well, we get another radius and the radius will go around that like this and we still don't know really well where is that epicenter if we compare the two it could occur at any of these two locations this is the right distance from our station and the right distance from the second station but it could be either of those two spots so we really need to have a third station and only then can we say oh look this is the correct radius and right there is the only spot on earth that's the right distance from all one two three stations so that must be where the epicenter is. Now we know the location where the earthquake occurred. The more stations we have, the more precisely we can pinpoint that epicenter. The seismometer picks up earthquakes from anywhere in the world if it's a magnitude of six or greater. Um, about two of those happen every week, so we get about a hundred or more each year. We have three main programs that we use to record data from the seismometer. Um, those are Windquake, Amasize, and Jamasize. The most effective for looking at previous data would probably be Windquake. I'll open that up right now. And you see all these files and you can just choose one and have it open. And here it'll show you the P and the S waves. The P waves start here and the S waves start here. So the P waves are over here, um, they're the first waves, nobody ever feels them, except for apparently animals, which is why they start acting weird right before an earthquake. Then here we have the S waves, which are the first sign 
that we feel of an earthquake. They're slightly bigger than the P waves, but slower. The gap here is the distance between the epicenter and the sensor that picked up the earthquake. Then over here, this big mess, is the surface waves. The surface waves are what cause buildings to fall over and car alarms to go off. So if an earthquake was just this over here, we wouldn't have a problem, but this is here, so we have problems. But the most useful I find for present is JAMA size. So right down here, you can see that it's going forward, and if you just shake this, you can see the spike right there. Then it'll keep going as long as this mechanism is moving. If we go here to manage sources, we can see here, we can look, be looking at up to three different seismometers just by clicking remote. Then you'll see all of these different places with working seismometers that are uploading to the internet. This was an earthquake in Nevada. You hit extract selection. Then you can save it and then it'll then you can open it up later into windquake so that's basically all you need to know about the programs i can't tell you how cool it is to see my students skyping with college professors talking with the scientists who are conducting this research as their profession dr vera schulte in boulder or ted channel who invented this entire phenomenon to have my students working with them is sort of the kind of thing that really only happens for most people in graduate school. This is one of the most exciting things I've ever done. Not only did I not do it, I didn't invent it. <laughs> so I recommend you go out and do the same thing. If you're a teacher, I think your students will love it.